Hello, friends, and welcome to our Sunday streaming services. If you're with us on Facebook or YouTube, subscribe to get notifications when we have new videos. If you're with us here on Zoom, welcome, welcome. We are so happy to have you here. Drop a hello in the chat so that we can say hi back. And if this is your first time joining us, go sign our guest book at oakcliffuu.org slash guest. Today's sermon, Community Care with UUCOC VP, Renee Brill. All right, it's time. Let's check in on this week's repairs and beautification. We have some awesome newly painted doors. Scott, show us the doors. Oh, I am so excited about all the colors at our church. I cannot wait to go back. It's going to be so fun. All right. Let's talk about going back. Let's talk reopening. We are still trying to do that. September 19th will be the date that the board gets together and decides whether we still can. Um, if we do it, it will be on the 26th and we will be requiring masks. We will be outdoors, but masks will be required. Uh, if you have any chairs or benches or canopies that you can donate, we would love to have those for the day. If you can help with that, go ahead and Use this email address here. Let us know that you can help. Uh, we also need help with setup and teardown. So if you can do that, also great. And we sent a survey out uh, just to get a feel of what we are comfortable with. So please go to the eblast and fill out that survey. I filled it out right away. I think it's like two questions. It's super quick. Um, so just go do it. Help us out. Okay. Check your eblast. All right, Intuck is holding a webinar on September 23rd called The Roots of White Supremacy, part of widening the circle of concern. Uh, register at www.intuck.org slash widening webinar. Speaking of widening the circle of concern, we are still holding weekly meetings on Sundays. Um, they are going really well. I've been there for all of them and I'm telling you, there's some really, really, really great conversation going on. Um, we would love to have you. It is a fun group. It's really thought provoking stuff. So if you'd like to join us, then go ahead and email Renee at vice hyphen president at oakliffuu.org. She will give you a link and you can come join us. All right, let's talk about our upcoming craft supply sale. It's going to be so much fun. All right, ready, ready. I got this thing. Clear out your craft room for a good cause. UUCOC is partnering with Craft Cycle Dallas, a new project inspired by the creative reuse movement. Craft Cycle takes donated arts and craft supplies, new and used, and sells them at accessible prices to put arts materials in the hands of students, teachers, anyone who can use them. The inaugural event will be parking lot sale on October 10th, we, and that's at our church. So much fun. Uh, we are accepting donations of yarn, fabric, sewing supplies, painting supplies, crayon, jewelry making supplies, etc. We also need supplies to bag, store, and display the items, such as Ziploc bags, small plastic bins, price stickers, etc. Uh, for more information on that, contact Donna at fundraising at oakliffuu.org. You can also check out the eblast. It's got so much information on it. This is going to be so much fun. It's this new thing. You know, artists just, you've got all those craft supplies that you're just not going to use. So donate them to the church for a good cause and show up on that day. Masks will be required, even though it is an outdoor event. I'm trying to keep everybody safe. All right, make sure that you go check out the eblast anyway, because you should be doing that. If you are not signed up, go to our church page and sign up. And if you are signed up, read it. There's a lot of great stuff, events, news, updates, uh, meeting links, a message from our president every single week. Lots of details. If you want to know at all what's happening in your church, just check out the eblast. All right, today is Sunday. So after church, we have talk back at 1115. So much fun. Come chat with people, talk about the sermon, get some more out of it. We also have adult RE at one o'clock as we do every Sunday. We also have a couple of UUCOC social hours um, to, uh, Tuesday at seven o'clock, seven to eight o'clock with Alex on Discord and Fridays at nine o'clock on Zoom. So a couple of ways to hang out with your family. All right. That was a lot, right? But we've gotten to the end and here we are, member anniversaries. 
We have three awesome ones. Okay. Okay. These are so good. I know they're all good. Everybody's so great. I love our church. Okay. First of all, happy UUCOC anniversary to Chris Snively. Yay. <laughs> Number two, happy UUCOC anniversary to Johnny Chapman. Johnny, seriously, I was just thinking about you the other night and I miss our hugs. You give such great hugs. I don't know what brought it on, but I just like, I miss hugging Johnny. <laughs> All right. And finally, last but certainly not least, celebrating 25 years at UUCOC. Happy anniversary to Jim Clip. <laughs> See, I told you those were good. I told you. I wouldn't lead you astray. All right, everybody, that is it. I hope that all of you have a very happy Sunday. Good morning, and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Oak Cliff. Thank you for having the curiosity and courage to join us. We welcome you, whoever you are, whatever spiritual tradition, gender, age, race, sexual orientation, or background you may bring to our community. We hope you will find here comfort, connection, challenge, respect, and above all, love. As you know, our last surviving charter member, Elaine Wildman, passed away last Sunday. I wanted to take a few moments to honor her legacy with those she dearly loved. Elaine was kind, thoughtful, and wise. She was also very truthful and never hesitated to let you know if there was a problem. She fought the good fights and the effort to see her community thrive. She was also at the door each Sunday greeting newcomers and taking time to get to know them. I was blessed to be one of the people with whom she entrusted her stories about the history of the church. She was also one of the reasons I decided to run for the board. She believed in my ability to, the, to do the job. Elaine's memorial service is still in the planning stages, and we will pass along the details as soon as they are completed. May with the light we now kindle inspire us to use our powers to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to bless and not to curse, to serve you, spirit of love, compassion, and forgiveness. Que esta luz que ahora encendemos nos inspire a usar nuestros dones y poderes para sanar y no para herir, para ayudar y no para impedir, para bendecir y no para maldecir, para servirte a ti, espíritu de amor, compasión, E perdón. Committed to respond by Lynn Harrison. Committed to respond to the call of a wounded world, we join together this day with loving hearts, hands, and minds, embracing the interconnected web of water, air, and earth. We light a fire of sustaining hope, ever bright with love and justice. May we bring forth this day new wisdom, strength, and courage to create a new world, not of wealth, but of well-being, a world of new peace and abundance for all. As we give thanks for this earth, our shared and singular home, may we dedicate ourselves to its ongoing care, rising to the calls deep within us and all around us. May we respond today and always with courage and love.
Because we love one another, we honor each individual spiritual journey. We celebrate life's abundance and service to each other, our community, and the world. We connect with each other in love, respect, and acceptance. Thus do we covenant together. And now in Spanish. ¿Por qué nos amamos unos al otro? Oramos el viaje espiritual de cada individuo. Celebramos la abundancia de la vida en el servicio a entre sí, nuestra comunidad y el mundo. Ponemos en contacto a unos con otros en el amor, respeto y acepciencia. Así que hacemos pacto. In our community, we make time each week to share pieces of our lives with one another, our joys and sorrows. We do this because each person in this community has value. Each person's experience matters. We share our sorrow with one another today, knowing that sorrow comes into each person's life, knowing that together we offer comfort. At this time, we invite you to publicly post your sorrows and prayer requests to the Zoom chat or send them to our Facebook Messenger. I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. We also share our joys with one another, knowing that joy comes into all our lives, knowing that joy calls unto joy, knowing that together our voices can rise in a chorus of celebration. At this time, we invite you to publicly post your joys and prayer requests to the Zoom chat or send them to our Facebook Messenger.
Good morning. This morning, I want to talk to you about community, about how important it is, how powerful it is, and invite you into the work of growing and sustaining community. And to remind you that building community, it's mostly fun. But before that, I want to outline why it is so important for us to focus on this work now. This last week, the CDC announced that the new variant of COVID had been located in every state in the United States. And this week, Dallas has also located a mu variant case. If you're unfamiliar with this particular variant, it is mutated enough that we are not sure how effective our vaccines are going to be. Now, the state of the nation and our country and our fellow citizens today is such that for as long as about half of the population is unvaccinated and unprotected, the, va the virus is going to continue to mutate probably rapidly among unvaccinated people. The WHO this week announced that they expect that similar to the flu, COVID is likely to be here to stay. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know what that means for forever. But what I know it means right now is that I need to do a better job of finding ways to get together outside with other people. Since the beginning of the pandemic, I have had this kind of hope that this is really temporary that someday things are going to go back to normal. And now I don't think that's true. I'm not even sure that's what I want. I mean, normal was kind of not great. <laughs> the best thing about normal was being together with you, being together in community, singing together, being together with my family and my friends from far away. That was the best thing about normal. So if COVID is here to stay, then what we have to do and what we can be excited to do is engage in a creative process together of imagining how we can be outside, here in Texas, even when it's very hot, even when it's very cold, even when it's raining. Why is that so important? Why is even just spending more time in video calls together so important. It's important because when we are together, that is what makes us more resilient. It is the thing that clicks on in our brain that says that we're getting our social needs met, that we're being seen and that we're seeing others. Now, we've been doing this whole COVID thing for a while, and I know that we are all real, real tired, real, real tired. And it seems like so much work, there's so much work to do to combat all of the problems that are facing our world that it can be overwhelming. What communities do is provide us with the space that we need to care for each other. They provide us with camaraderie, with laughter, with joy, as well as with solidarity. 
It is the relationship that underpins our community that is the engine of our faith. We are a religion that is fundamentally, above all, about being in relationship with each other. How do we be in relationship with each other outside? Now, for some of us, I mean, my camping is just about my favorite thing in the world, or maybe for pagans who are used to being outside in worship, this is second hat. This is exciting. This is maybe even something we've looked forward to for a long time. But at the same time, we also know that it can be really physically challenging to be outside in Texas when it's 110 degrees outside. So it is going to take at least some imagining of what that looks like. But I know we have the skills in our church to do that. It is also going to take some imagining of how we can be together more regularly online, how we can spend time not just in committee meetings and doing homework and doing service and doing work for each other, but playing with each other. Playing with each other is one of the most helpful and useful things we can do in building a relationship with anyone, but also with ourselves. When, when my husband and I were having a hard time, now I, I know that you're thinking that I must be just a delight to live with all of the time. <laughs> And that there's no possible way that I could have miscommunication problems or relationship problems. That is not especially true. And in times of great stress, my husband and I, who both come from some pretty rough times, fall back on old patterns of stress. That is true for most groups. I, in my household, those patterns of stress are about being defensive, seeing the other person as an adversary and feeling like I am constantly needing to defend myself. In our congregation in times of great stress, our longstanding habits are to work harder than we actually can do sustainably, and often to lament why other people aren't working so hard so unsustainably. Sometimes we look for an individual person who we think isn't doing well enough. Sometimes it's just a matter of being short or a little bit friction kind of grading on each other. That's like unavoidable human behavior. Everybody has bad days. So when my husband and I were having that experience, we went to a counselor and our counselor gave us probably the best relationship advice I've ever gotten, which is that we were spending all of our time together working on things, doing bills, doing chores, trying to sort through or debate or solve a problem that wasn't really a problem or get into discussions over semantics and verbiage and la, la, la. But we weren't spending any time having fun with each other. And how relationships work is normally you start with having fun with each other. And it's that fun that creates that good feeling that lets you feel more safe together, gives each other, give each other more of the um, benefit of the doubt, expect that 
other people are making mistakes on accident, or maybe it's not even a mistake and it's just a miscommunication. Anyway, that advice of spending more time having fun with each other, as it turns out, actually is helpful for all of those other worries and all of that other work that we have to do. It takes so much extra stress out of the relationship. And frankly, I like doing it. Fun is an important part of the relationships that we have together. It's like putting uh, a benevolent <laughs> a benevolent coin in your happiness bank for each other. And then eventually when we have a bad day, I kind of shake out that coin of goodwill and give it back and be a little bit extra patient. But when we haven't had a lot of good time together, that bank of goodwill can start to run a little dry. So when I say that I'm inviting you into what I believe is an exciting process, a creative process, a beautiful process, that is what I mean. I mean that what we imagine and do together to build and grow our community, no matter how silly or goofy, is also still serious work, important work. It is the work that actually binds us together and gives us a respite from all of those other worries that we have. So what might it look like to spend more time doing fun things instead of just working together? How, what might it look like to plan activities where we can be together outside? Maybe that is trying to find people who are close to each other so that they can go on walks together outside. Maybe that means having yoga in the parking lot. Maybe that means watching movies on the side of the church together. Maybe that means worshiping on the grounds of our congregation. It could also mean spending time on Zoom or in Discord, knitting, sewing, doodling, or just playing games together. Just that relaxing spending time together actually meets some of our basic social needs. When we can see each other and hear each other, that helps a lot to meet some of our social needs. I genuinely believe that although I am absolutely terrible, actually, at all of those like group planning and party planning and uh, all of that. There are people in our congregation who are spectacularly good at it. Some of the beautiful ways that we have done community care have been in our Wednesday work days that Rebecca leads, which involve not just work for the church, but also time sitting together and eating, meeting some of our needs for companionship and camaraderie. I don't think it's an accident that that's one of the most popular events on our church campus these days. What does that look like for you? What is something that you might want to do with your fellow congregants? Is there a game you want to play? Is there a way you want to be together? There are other specific things that you can do if you can to help us find ways to be together. If you have any technology or old computers or old computer parts, that might be put to use putting 
a computer together that people can get online on Zoom with, that would be a fantastic thing to donate. I know that there are people who want to be able to join us on Zoom right now who are not able to. If you have tents or tarps or canopies of any kind that we can use to shade ourselves or stay out of the rain, those would be a fantastic thing to donate. And if you had the ability to donate a tent so big that we could all meet underneath it safely, that would be such a blessing to our community. Now, I look forward to traveling down this long road together. It's not what I wanted a year ago. But I'm starting to feel like it might come to be what I want. Being together, listening to the breeze. hearing the birds, it's not a bad way to be. Amen, Ashe, and blessed be. We are going, heaven knows where we are going, but we know where they and we will get there Heaven knows how we will get there But we know we will It will be hard, we know And the road will be muddy and rough But we'll get there Heaven knows how we will get we know we will. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We are going. Heaven knows where we are going. We know we're there. And we will get there. Heaven knows how we will get there. We know we will. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Let there be an offering to sustain and strengthen this place, which is sacred to so many of us, a community of memory and hope, for we are now the keepers of the dream. To make an offering or your pledge, please go to oakcliffuu.org slash donate and follow the links. Thank you. From this we live, de ti o recibo, a ti te doy, así compartimos y vivimos hoy. Amen. Um. 
you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live, to ti recibo, a ti te doy, así compartimos y vivimos hoy. Be About the Work by Andrea Hawkins Kemper. May we see all as it is, and may it all be as we see it. May we be the ones to make it as it should be. For if not us, who? If not now, when? This is the answering cry of justice with the work of peace. This is redeeming the pain of history with the grace of wisdom. This is the work we are called to do, and this is the call we answer now, to be the barrier and the bridge, to be the living embodiment of our principles, to be about the work of building the beloved community, to be a people of intention and a people of conscience. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And now in Spanish. Encendimos esta llama, pero no la luz de la verdad. El calor de comunidad o el fuego de nuestro compromiso. Estos los llevamos en el corazón hasta que estemos juntos otra vez. We are being